certification has been designed to really focus more on the pre-sales architecture of blockchain solutions, specifically enterprise blockchains. Now, the course itself has been devised really to focus mainly on the topics just for the exam. Now, typically, this would be a three-day course, which I've broken down to under eight hours. So basically, we'll talk about what a CBSA is. We'll talk about, for example, what the CBSA exam questions are like and what are the exam objectives in this module. The course itself will cover, of course, everything you need to know around the objectives for this challenging exam. Before we get started, let's do a quick intro to your instructor. My name is Joseph Holbrook, and I've been in the IT industry for over 25 years. I've had numerous roles from pre-sales to post-sales, implemented networking and storage solutions to cloud and, of course, blockchain. Now, it's very important to realize, too, that when it comes to blockchain, we need to distinguish between enterprise blockchains and cryptocurrencies. This is where I'm going to come in so that you're not confused, of course, between do we need to really know Bitcoin or do we just need to know Hyperledger? So we'll walk you through that. Now, I've been writing a lot of books and content around blockchain for the last few years, specifically enterprises. I'm also a published author as well of Architecting Enterprise Blockchain Solutions from Wiley. And I also have the CBSA exam guide, which is also available on Amazon. Lastly, before we get started, I'm also a prior U.S. Navy veteran. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the um, areas that I feel the course was really designed for. As far as the audience of the course, it's really meant for enterprise customers. The course itself and also the certification is not meant to test you to become a certified Bitcoin professional. It's a totally different course and, and also content, so be aware of that. This is for enterprise solutions. So if your organization is looking at Hyperledger, Corda, Ethereum, then this is an awesome certification I'd highly recommend you consider. Lastly, the course itself, as well as the exam, does not get into coding. In other words, there's no program development. We don't need to know how to program in Solidity. We do not need to know how to program or develop, for example, in Python or anything of that nature. If that's of interest to you, for example, the Hyperledger and the Ethereum developer certifications do have some of that content around coding and development in those exams. For this, this is mainly an architecture, a pre-sale certification. I'm really excited to get started, so let's go ahead and move on to the next lesson. What is a certified blockchain solutions architect? Now, a CBSA, as we would typically call a certified blockchain solutions architect, is really an elite way that you can prove your knowledge in enterprise blockchain. It's really meant for you to prove your experience, your knowledge, your understanding of blockchain technologies, mainly from an enterprise perspective. This is not a blockchain cert that's focused on cryptocurrencies, for example. So when you pass this exam, you'll become a member of an elite group. There isn't a lot of folks that are certified in this area. So that's a really good thing from a marketing and also a job perspective as well. Now, the CBSA is going to be an exam that you'll be taking at typically a Pearson testing center. Now, during the times of COVID, it may be online as well. This is something you'll need to check as well before you sign up for the exam. Now, it depends on where you live, if you could take the test online or if you could take it, for example, in person. Now, when you pass a cert, you're going to be knowledgeable from a pre-sales perspective effectively in blockchain. Now, one of the things that I like about this certification, and I was one of the first to actually get this certification and actually pass it and write about the certification. So my experience in this area is pretty much uh, from a industry perspective, pretty uh, 
pretty clear and, and historically defined. Uh, you'll see numerous books uh, about my experience with this exam, many blog posts, etc. Now, with this said, I think it's important to realize that this exam is going to focus mainly on architecting blockchain solutions. So what does this mean? Well, this just means that you'll be able to understand a scenario and provide a solution. Basically, you'll need to understand, does the customer, does your enterprise, for example, need to deploy a Hyperledger blockchain or can you use Ethereum? Is it a public or a private blockchain? And another thing that I think is important as well is to understand effectively the pre-sales process of blockchain architecture. In other words, this is really understanding, do we perform a proof of concept? How do we do it? What is basically the focus area, for example, of the use case? Does the customer really need a blockchain? Or maybe they need to have more of a centralized database, for example, like SQL. So it's really understand the technical, but the business merits as well. We also, of course, will want to understand how to choose the appropriate blockchain systems to meet the needs. Lastly, it, it focuses as well on basically understanding can we, of course, deploy publicly or privately. Now, we'll talk more about what you'll be tested on in the objectives and, of course, throughout the course. That's all that I had for this lesson. Let's move to the next lesson. Welcome to Module 2. In Module 2, we want to get into the blockchain fundamentals and actually understand, for example, what a blockchain is. We'll talk about some of the components in a blockchain and then terminology that we'll also want to know for the exam as well. We have a lot to cover. Let's proceed to the next lesson. What is a blockchain? It's a really good question, right? There's probably 20 different definitions for 20 different people you talk to. So here's some examples of different definitions that I pulled just off of the internet just to give you an example of some of the ones that you might run into. Then what I'm gonna do is sum it up with my definition and the definition that BTA would like you to know. Now, when it comes to blockchain, we wanna think of the blockchain as a cryptographically secure shared distributed ledger. Okay, so that's a pretty good definition technically. So if you're a technical person, that's a great definition you're going to understand. But if you're a business person, a legal analyst, you're like, hmm, I'm not sure I understand. So the point here is, is that we really don't really have one good definition that fits everyone. We generally need to define blockchain to the right audience from a pre-sales perspective. It's very important to understand that. Now, immutable transactions that are written on this distributed ledger on distributed nodes. Again, technical definition. Okay, transformational technology in which business and government invest in. All right, transformational technology. Now that's more business focus. If you're an executive, a C-level uh, person or the board member, this is gonna make more sense to you. Transformation. Transformation generally means I can basically take an older technology, bring in a new one, and pretty much bring in you know a new cost structure, reduce costs, time to market, whatever that, uh, whatever they're thinking of, right? It is a decentralized database which stores information in the form of transactions. Again, another example of a technical based definition. Now, when I talk about blockchain, the first thing I like to do is just compare it to something everybody would sort of have an idea about. That would be a book, right? A book is what? Paper that's bound. So this book, we're able to open up and write in, let's say. However, this book, for example, when we write to it, we're going to write to what? A page. Well, this page is similar to a block. So when I add a block to the book, well, that block is basically what? It's effectively a transaction. So when I make a page entry into that book, that's like a blockchain transaction. So just as, as a summary, let's think of a blockchain as like a book that can be written to but can't be modified, deleted, etc. Now, blockchains can be private or public as well, and it's important to consider this sort of approach to a definition, or at least a statement, I should say. 
blockchains are revolutionary when it comes to the way of implementing trust in a platform. Okay, the key word here is trust, and we're gonna go back to that here very shortly. So when we have a blockchain, for example, this is a public blockchain example. I have a buyer and a seller. Now, instead of using a centralized infrastructure like, for example, the ACH system, the Swiss system with the bank, or using Western Union, let's say, I can send funds from Sally here, uh, let's say as a buyer, and then the seller here is Fred. Again, just as an example. So as long as the buyer has enough funds in her crypto wallet, then she can be able to click or you know enter the amount of funds depending on you know if she's using coinbase or she's using um you know a node explorer whatever she's using basically um you know she has a light node a full node whatever whatever the situation is let's say they're able to send funds basically and when i say funds crypto basically from point a to point b so basically from one wallet to another wallet. Now I don't have the wallets in there as an example. I just want to do a high level right now. And basically you could see that we have different nodes. Well, that transaction is going to be processed basically by every node. In other words, that node, for example, might pick up the transaction, write it to the blockchain. And then each of these nodes will have a copy of that transaction. So just to clarify, not every node processes it, I should say, but does have um, basically participation in the sense that a copy of the ledger is replicated to another node. Now, proof of work works differently than proof of stake. This is, again, when we talk about algorithms, things are going to be a little bit different. But at a high level, I just wanted to start putting this together. Okay. Now, when it comes to blockchain solutions, for example, we could use a blockchain for just about anything as long as we're able to tolerate, for example, the performance. Now, if I'm a hedge fund trying to analyze a bunch of data, I'm not going to use a blockchain. It's just too slow. On the other hand, if I just need to use it um, to validate identities from a bank, let's say, or let's say we're a bank conglomerate, we want to use KYC. We want a quicker system. The blockchain could be a great solution where everything is written to a blockchain and referenced and can be referenced later so that we don't have to go through the same process of uploading papers, uploading IDs, validating information like tax IDs. Everything's already on the blockchain. So this is just a simple example. So what is the difference between a blockchain and a database? It's important to distinguish this because blockchain and um, databases have some similarities, but some differences. The main difference, again, is the CRUD operation, right? In, in a database, I can read, um, update, delete, and create. In a blockchain, I can only create and read. In other words, I can write once, but then I can't update or delete to the blockchain in a true blockchain. One of the things to be aware of too is that the ledger is replicated to every other node in the blockchain. Generally, blockchains are open to the public when they're permissionless, of course, and there's a lot of transparency. So with that said, this is just a simple comparison. So let's go ahead and talk more about what exactly a blockchain is. A blockchain is really a globally shared data structure. It's really a transactional backend. Now, this is sort of my approach on the definition. I sort of like this better than some of the other definitions. Because once you understand it's really a data structure, then it makes sense. This data structure, we can only write to, we can't delete, can't modify. Basically, everyone can read from it. We could use it as basically a reference to validate information. Really, really straightforward, really simple technology when you really think about it. When it comes to changing something, basically, um, you have to create a transaction. Now, when I say change, it's really adding to the blockchain. In other words, that blockchain is going to be appended to. And 
when we have an appendage to the blockchain, it's just basically create another block and then that previous block is referenced and we'll go into that more. So the word transaction implies that again, that we're gonna add something to the blockchain effectively.